Today I want to show you how to take wide angle shots literally anywhere like I mean anywhere whether it's going to be in the city in a cafe or somewhere in the outdoor let's do it So today's video is all about wide angle lens and uh, yeah, because many people questioned me before how to take wide angle shots anywhere, in a city, in a cafe, or you know, just anywhere. Why wide angle is going to be so difficult to use? Well, the truth is, yes and no. Yes, if you don't understand how wide angle lenses work, which hopefully today I'm going to cover that. And second, it's because they are so used to using a normal lens. Um, well, this is understandable because most people will start with a standard lens or just kind of like the, the normal range of focal lengths to create things that we normally see. And uh, this is no bad thing, this is because you're going to start somewhere, right? You must well start somewhere that you are familiar with. So if you're using a standard lens, this is how your eyes see things and this is how you're going to compose your shots. Uh, this is all good. But if you start want to start getting more creative, you want to start having some more impactful photographs, then you may want to start to explore something else. You know, something that not just about photoshopping, it's about optical illusion. And why angle lens does give you that. Okay, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use a uh, lower ultra wide lens uh, because they currently have the widest rectilinear uh, lens available on the Micro Four Third platform. And you do know that I shoot Micro Four Third, but they do have other uh, uh, equivalent wide angle lenses for APS-C and also full frame. So you can check out all the uh, ultra wides in the websites. I'm gonna have the link in the description. But in terms of my current demonstration, um, I wanna show you the widest possible lens. This is why I'm using the six millimeters um, on the Micro Four Third. That's equivalent to a 12 millimeters in a full frame terms. So this is really wide, like so wide that everything will be extra distorted um, so first of all I want to tell you all about the the, uh, the distortion side of it because uh, if you haven't shot a ultra wide angle lens before when you first pick one up put it on the lens if you look through the viewfinder you'll see that oh my lord everything is just stretched especially towards the edges and this is exactly the point so for my first demonstration I'm going to use this little plank here and uh, just by the water I have a piece of wood in front of me and I'm going to utilize uh, the, the wood directions to create a leading line and because of the exaggeration that I just mentioned the ultra wide lens will stretch that and give you a more elongated view to direct the viewer's eyes towards the lock and then to the lake itself and this should give me a pretty interesting um, uh, composition and also more dramatic and once you edit it it'll be pretty cool so we have a go yeah let's do that okay right got a couple of shots I think that um, you can actually see how the wide angle accentuates the foreground especially because of the stretching that I mentioned earlier and the lock will look extra big in the uh, the area where it's closer to the lens itself and then slowly kind of diminish this in size towards the further end and uh, this is interesting in terms of composition and give you that impact that I just talked about right the second thing about wide angle lens is compression or the lack of <laughs> and uh, I kind of mentioned it earlier about you know the uh, the comparison between a standard lens a wide angle lens and a tele lens and uh, the longer you go the more tele you go the more compression you're going to get so you're going to bring in the foreground and the background closer to the subject itself but the positive of that is that you get less compression so you've got a more natural look on uh, let's say if you're photographing a headshot for instance you get less compression, but so you got more compression and you got uh, less distortion. So you can see the subject more how you would see them naturally. So many people think that the 50 millimeters is the standard lens and that's got no compression, distortion, whatever. And that is totally wrong. You do get it, <laughs> you do get it. Depending on how close you want to shoot your subject. And uh, that has a great impact in terms of that. So the wide angle, obviously I just mentioned is on the opposite end of it. So you do stretch the distance between the, uh, the foreground and the background 
in relation to the subject itself. Uh, this is going to be the, uh, the topic of today, of course, and how you can utilize that distance to create those kind of uh, impactful and creative shots. Before I continue, one thing you may not want to do with your ultra wide angle lens is situation like this an empty field with nothing on it. <laughs> there is no foreground interest, there's no background interest. So if you take a shot like this, it will be extra boring and your subject will be tiny. No, absolutely not. So try not to do that unless you, uh, uh, you know, have something very specific in mind. But this is another thing I want to talk to you about uh, uh, when you go traveling, for instance, and how you take a slightly better shot with your ultra wide angle lens. Let's say if you're standing on a cliff, you see something really, really interesting. You're, it, it's just the whole landscape just wowing your head. Your head would just say, whoa, man, I need to take this photograph. Right, be careful of that because you are seeing things using your human eyes. Yeah, using your yeah, human eyes. You are human. <laughs> using your eyes. So your brain is calculating everything using that vision. And that means that if you use a 50 millimeter lens, you will get that wow effect because that's how you see things, right? So if you suddenly change to a wide angle lens and trying to snap that shot while you're seeing it, it may not work because when you take a shot, when you look at it back, in, uh, back at home, blow it up, so it looks different. It doesn't look the same in my head. It's only because you're so used to your normal vision and then uh, you're, not, you're not tailoring your calculations in a wide angle's perspective. So you need to adjust that. You need to start seeing things. Oh, maybe I need to introduce some foreground interest. Maybe I need to change the, the, the composition, the angle to create the impact that I was hoping to achieve. Um, uh, this is something you have to bear that in mind. Otherwise, you're not going to get any great shots with your eye wide angle lens, but just by standing there, even though you have an amazing scene in front of you, if you don't know how to utilize your wide angle, you, you're not going to get it. Oh, look at the light. Okay, the light is good. Let's see. Let's see if I can see the light from here. Oh, okay. Maybe something here. I'm only trying this because the light is good here and it's really shining in front of me. So uh, let me just double check in terms of the, uh, the angle of view to see whether I can actually create something really cool here. Okay. Yes, I can create something. Right, this is only for demonstration purposes. Obviously, it's not a pro standard uh, that I usually uh, would do. But for demonstration, this is really cool at the moment because I got the sun directly in front of me. And remember, I told you about the exaggerations on the edges of the frame because everything's been stretched. This is a perfect example because now with the sun and all these plants in front of me, and they're creating all these shadows and the shadows are all stretched. And this will give you that dynamic uh, leading line to where the sun is. So if you take a shot like this now, and uh, this is gonna be really, really interesting. I'm gonna stop down the, the, the depth of uh, the actual uh, aperture so I can actually create everything in focus so I can actually see how dynamic it is because it's just amazing how you can create a shot like this. And, uh, this is a really good example because you can actually use this sort of shadow, extended shadow in uh, in an outdoor environment and landscape uh, in city. Uh, you have buildings, you have lampposts, for instance, even people. You know, you have lots of people walking, uh, uh, especially in winter, uh, in winter in England or Western uh, countries. You do have this low angle sun. Um, so in the morning, if you've got lots of commuters like walking past a train station, you have this light hitting all the people there, casting all these long shadows. These sort of wide angle lenses will give you that really interesting and creative, impactful shots. <laughs> yeah, you should try that. Really, really cool. Right, I have found something interesting. It's this piece of stumped wood, whatever you call it, chopped down tree. And uh, it's got a little bit of grass growing on top of it. And because I have the sun right behind it once again, so if I go close, using the close-up uh, focusing capability of any ultra wide angle lens, utilizing the shallower depth of field by setting the aperture to wider setting, you can once again create something really, really cool. So I'm gonna try it to you so you can actually see. And uh, it's amazing actually this shot. Right, I'm gonna make sure everything is good. Right, oh my God, this is, this is interesting. 
this is interesting okay this is actually pretty good and uh, i just take that shot and it looks really dramatic uh, not only because of the stretched uh, outer edge of the frame that gives you that dynamic look but also the shallow depth of field to draw the interest to the actual grass itself and the grass is also backlit by the sun um, it, it just looks amazing so uh <laughs> it's cool so you can actually find a lot of interesting thing to photograph with an ultra wide angle lens once you're accustomed to the the angle of view uh, how a wide angle lens behave and you can actually do something amazing um okay let's go on continue and find something else uh, see if i can get another great shot let's go this is another situation that you may want to avoid using ultra wide is a narrow path like this Many people with to go hiking and traveling uh, into the wilderness, for instance, when you see a path like this, we have leaves on either side looking beautiful. The colors are looking great. Um, they probably think that, oh, well, yeah, that's, that, let's take a shot with the ultra wide. Um, and because of the exaggerations uh, that I mentioned earlier, the elongations of the foreground and the background and anything in between, it basically diluted all the visual interest that you are seeing from your human eyes. And uh, so if you want to take a more impactful shot, you, you're better off using a standard 25 or 50 millimeters uh, in full frame or a longer lens even, uh, maybe 90s or even 100, 200 to compress the scene to give you that look that you're craving for. Unless you're photographing a subject, having a model right in front of you, and then, uh, then you, can, you can maybe get something more meaningful. But otherwise, nah, try to avoid it, yeah? Unless you found something in the foreground that you want to photograph. <laughs> so let me just stop it down. Let's see what happened. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad at all. Not bad at all. You can see it's just amazing, right? You can see all these leaves in front of me here. I'm using the tree on either side of it to compose, to frame the shot, to get the balance of the composition here. And the path is right in the middle. And uh, yeah, it's all about symmetry here. Everything just looks perfect. Well, while I'm walking to us, uh, my next destination, I might as well talk a little bit about um, uh, composition using ultra wide angle lens. Because of the impacts that I want to create, the distortion that I was seeking, so most likely I'm going to go for low angle, like ultra low angle shots. You can go top down, but then it will basically do the opposite effect by stretching things in the wrong way. And uh, things will become a little bit more awkward, especially if you have subject in the frame. And uh, that means that they're going to have the, a bigger head and smaller body. They may have longer limbs, but it just looks alien. So you don't want to do that. And, uh, so having a lower angle shot would just give you a slightly more elegant look uh, if you have a subject. If not, uh, having a low angle shot would also create the foreground interest that makes the wide angle shot interesting. And uh, otherwise, if you go top down, things will look rather different <laughs> and also more boring at the same time. So here is this, another location that maybe I can utilize something let's see so I can see that I'm on a bridge at the moment and uh, everything's symmetrical you've got lots of lines going which is great and uh, so this is the perfect time to use an ultra angle lens to create an impactful shot that you want you've got the sun right behind the bridge and currently having a very uh, a weird angle at the moment which is not perfect but for demonstration i just want to show you how you can create that sort of shots um, ideally i mean i would like the uh, the angle to be maybe just to us the west a little bit well east a little bit more um, to having the lines slightly more zigzaggy kind of crossing the surfaces of the bridge but you know time is essence here so i'm trying to create this shot as quickly as possible and uh because i only have limited time to create the whole episode today um to show you guys how you can use your wide angle lens so without further ado let's try to take this shot i can show you exactly what i mean okay so let's do this so one thing to remember is that try to position yourself as level as possible try not to uh uh correct too many things in post. Try to do most of the stuff correct first time in camera will save you so much time 
and also things will look a lot more natural when it comes to editing. And uh, this is what my advice to any photographer anytime, regardless of subject, regardless of genre of photography, get everything right in the first thing, uh, uh, you know, in camera. First shot was okay, but now trying to take a second shot, I'm going to do uh, a vertical shot now. Earlier I done a horizontal shot, which looks okay-ish, and uh, not the best I would say, but then uh, let's see what I can do with the uh, uh, more elongated look. So this time I'm going to go slightly lower angle and see what I can achieve. Okay. Right. Yeah, it just looks a bit weird to me in terms of the shadow position. And uh, it just looks a bit odd, especially that when you think about um, uh, uh, the actual sym symmetry of the photograph that I want to achieve. The shadow gives you that more slightly more right heavy compared to uh, a normal symmetrical look that I was going for. Oh my God, it's so shiny. <laughs> Wanda provoke light. I like it because, uh, you know what? It's a yellow backpack. <laughs> you know, I'm a yellow guy and how can I resist anything yellow, right? And uh, my, my usual, my usual uh, stuff are all yellow. My glasses, my jacket. I have a couple of yellow jackets. I have a yellow denim jacket. I have a yellow... Uh, uh, Right, uh, rider jacket uh, yeah pretty much even my shoes well not quite and I do have a couple of yellow shoes but I think that might be a bit too much people might think I'm crazy uh, anyway so <laughs> let's try our last bit here before we wrap up uh, for today's episode really um, hopefully you guys enjoy it so far and if you do you know what to do right give me a thumb and a sub Okay, right, here it is. We have uh, an interesting spot here. And uh, you can see that behind me is a very unique place. Uh, I have photographed here a few times. Um, uh, you've got this really lovely looking way out to the lake itself. And you've got some interesting building behind, famous for a lot of UK drama series. And uh, yeah, they have filmed here a lot, it used to be the Concrete City. Um, it has changed quite a bit over time and here um, uh, the surrounding area here is now being redeveloped and there are some really posh apartments being built in the far end uh, so this area is completely you know changed over the last few years the park has been renovated it's actually looking absolutely beautiful so I'm gonna take more shots after this video uh, so I can show you more samples uh, towards the end and uh, so you can basically get a gist of uh, what you can do with wide-angle lens because uh, you can actually do a lot uh, uh, creative impactful meaningful photograph just by using an ultra wide and also that restrictive uh, elements that I mentioned all through the video so far is actually really good for your uh, creative uh, training and uh, so you, you, just to train your mind to see things differently um, this uh, this way that you're starting to expand your visions not just restricting on something that you're familiar with because at some point you will have to break the mold. You will have to go step outside your comfort zone and go into something that uh, 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 different. And that way it will make your photography better uh, by differentiating yourself compared to you know all the general photographers out there. Remember that. <laughs> This is interesting. 
and uh, I may need to uh, go inside once again to see a slightly different perspective. Um, let's get in here, it's a bit lower here. Right, let's see what I can do. Okay. Here it is, I found my final subject, which is this beautiful tree here. The sun is behind and the leaves are just glowing in front of me, just looking absolutely stunning, dramatic. Right, i talk a little bit about perspective, a little bit about distortion, also give you some tips on how to compose your ultra wide angle shot, like going low angle to give you more impactful, energetic look into your frame. And uh, now just wrap things up by talking a little bit about the actual line of view and also how it changes when you tilt up and down the camera with the perspective changes. And uh, so if you hold your wide angle lens directly in front of your viewfinder, everything tends to look straight. And this is something that you probably realize and probably experience. If you go up a little bit, just tilting up the camera a little bit, things are starting to go like this, more like a pyramid. If you tilt down the camera, you will start to see things more like the opposite, going V-shaped. So you can actually utilize these characteristics to create something quite dramatic. And this is something that BBC does a lot for their Planet Earth series, uh, cinematography. And uh, so if you go like this, wide angle here, and looking at a tree, and it just looks amazing. You got these lines going up like a pyramid to create like, the shielding effect for the tree. And even if you go vertical, which does also the same thing, but this time with that line, and because I've got a longer view now, and I will exaggerate the tree trunk a little bit more to give to emphasize the overall uh, uh, structure of the actual tree itself with the leaves behind and, and the trunk and the branches. So this is really, really cool. Um, so this is really it, you know, like uh, the only way to find out how you can uh, maximize your wide angle shot is by going and start shooting. And hopefully you take some of the tips today and understand a little bit about uh, all the different terminologies in ultra wide angle. And uh, if you have any question at all, please leave in the comment section below and um, I will try to answer all of them uh, when I have time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really that simple. There's nothing special about it. The only trick is to learn and understand your own wide angle lens and all the different characteristics associating with your particular lens. So go out and have fun and try it all out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you learned a few things today and uh, remember what uh, to do now is <laughs> if you like this video, give me a thumb. And uh, also if you uh, uh, want to stay tuned and learn more about photography, remember to subscribe so you can see more video from me. See you next time. Bye for now. So thank you for watching uh, once again and also stay in tune for the blooper bit or the extra bit after the credits. <laughs> uh, well, hope you guys, uh, you guys enjoyed today's video and uh, I am using Lauer's 6mm lens and it's actually very cool. Um, and, uh, yes, you will see my review very soon actually because uh, this is a really, really awesome lens that I have been drooling all over since I reviewed it other six millimeters, but that was a cine lens. That was a T2.1 lens. And this is, of course, the latest photography focus uh, F2 lens. Uh, this is really, really awesome. I loved it. And uh, it's rectilinear, six millimeters. It's really, really wide. Um, you can actually create some just amazing cool shots with this lens. And the bonus thing is, it's so tiny. It's so tiny that uh, you don't have to worry about uh, weights and anything like that. You can chuck it to your um, uh, any sort of uh, small cameras, uh, micro four third cameras, uh, whether it's going to be pen, uh, OM5, EM5, you know, they're really good. Uh, I have it on my OM1 at the moment, which is fine, you know, just because I wanted to uh, uh, use it to, uh, to do some live ND shots. OM5 has it, but this has ND64. Yeah. This is cool because you can actually see some really cool effects uh, in the city, especially when there are lots of people because you can create some motion blur uh, with handheld, handheld motion blur shots. Amazing stuff. Cool. Anyway, good day. I'm going to go home now. Wipe my nose. It's so cold, man, so cold. Tomorrow's going to be colder though. We shall see.
Okay, no problemo. I'll see you all very soon. Bye. Right, let's do one more shot there. That's really perfect. Wow, this is just crazy, right? Crazy, crazy. Lovely, lovely. Right, I am trying to get some 360, <laughs> 360 shot of the ducks. Hello ducks. Can you see me ducks? Hope you can see me. Yeah, ducky ducky. Hello ducky ducky. Hello ducky ducky. Hello ducky ducky. Hello ducky ducky. I'm so evil. I'm so evil. <laughs> but I want to try that. I really want to try it with the 360 camera. I don't know. I'll have to edit it to see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm so evil. I did actually try to use my drone before just to fly close to them and get the, uh, the cinematic flying shots, yeah, you know, and uh, that everybody wants to see. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you do have to respect the animal, try not to get too close to them. And uh, we'll see. Right, okay, the shot I told you about earlier doesn't work. So let's continue walking to see what I can find. I don't know. Hello. 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 Let's get another shot. Ooh. It'd be good if I have a tele lens, but no, today's all about wide angle. Is that right? Eh? That's that right? Here, come on. You wanna have a look? You wanna have a look? Let's see what I have again. Okay, let's see what I can do. If you can come over here, it'll be really nice. It'll be really, really nice. I, all I need is to come over here. Yeah, that'd be really good. Yeah, come over here. Come over here. This size doesn't, this side has no interest. This size doesn't work. <laughs> no, I need something on this side. Okay. Maybe I'll do this. Like I said, ultra wide, ultra low, always works. It may not have the foreground interest I'm looking for, because if uh, there's a swan right in front of me, that will be really, really cool. Waiting for them to come over, right? Shame that I don't have any bread. Yeah, they're going to come over. <laughs> come on, come here. 